Enemy down. Mission success. Report to command for debrief. Wasn't the tech's fault. Infected. Your mission, survive at all costs.
Nice work. Well done. If that here is your new mission, soldier. Location locked. Infected. Your mission, survive at all costs.
find out. Good job. Report the command for debrief. Objectives fail. LZ confirmed. Infected. Your mission, survive at all costs.
infected. Your mission, survive at all costs. Mission accomplished. Well done. Infected. Your mission, survive at all costs. Enemy infantry in the 
open. Victory. Report to command for debrief. Next time I want the check mark. is taking there he is the hype man himself Glacier <laughs> it's Glacier of course it's Glacier but Glacier with the ace wins phase the round Glacier just said one clip is all I go need play. go Clay. go Clay. I'll never forget the first time I Scump is taking over Gets one second player is there. Scump gets both. I believe Scump is on it. He's halfway there. We're gonna divide stack form. Scump oh. kills all three. That play was awesome. Yeah. This is where Scump gets scary. Scumpy, he just blew them out of the water. He's 24 and 8. And look at Scump in the camera's face. Just said one clip is all I go need. Clay, go, Clay, go, Clay. I'll never forget the first time I saw Clayster back in Black Ops 2. He had a he had a mustache. He had a long ponytail. He looked like honestly he just got back from Woodstock. It, it's a video game tournament. You've got some nerds. You've got some different hair colors, some interesting personalities. But Clayster looked like a straight hippie out of a out of a film. It was wild to see. And now just to see him evolve into this like more. I guess, handsome, dashing leader that he's kind of become on his teams. It's been kind of wild to see because uh, I, I didn't know who he was when I first saw him. I was like, who the hell is this kid? Where do we begin with, with such a legend of the Call of Duty scene? I mean, you could trace his name back all the way to the early days of the Call of Duty 4 competitive scene. Even though he wasn't as big of a name back then, he was still around and competing with the best. If I had to choose one word to sum up Clayson's career, I would say fierce. Uh, I think in every event you've ever watched Clayster play, and he, he's gone at it with everything he has. He, he's always been a fierce competitor, and nobody that you want to take lightly. And you just can't doubt a guy like that. Clayster is your prototypical assault rifle player for competitive Call of Duty. He is accurate and very smart. We see him control a lot of the power spots for his team all around the map. When you talk about Hardpoint, he's going to be the guy who's going to rotate towards those hills early, control the spawns for his team. He really just fuels the rest of his team to just play at another level. When Clayster is into the game, like this team just looks completely different. Clay, one of the most important players to his team in Infinite Warfare. Even after all of his accolades, after everything he's won, he was a COD Champs MVP. This guy is still hungry. Do not sleep on him. Do not sleep on FaZe in Infinite Warfare. If you want storylines, we'll give you guys storylines. Welcome back. As you know, I am the Quartermaster, and today, you are in for the drop of a lifetime, my friends. First in the drop, a modified e -rad. I call it the Cyclopean. Light him up! It fires a concentrated energy. It's like a laser pointer. That'll kill you. Second, the EMC switchblade. Modified to fire like a shotgun. It is not a knife, but it will cut through your enemies like warm butter. Introducing the Mark II's, a legendary with plus 15% XP for kills. Hoorah! That there is some delicious camo. The Mauler, Sentinel. Feel the power. 
The slicer gun turret lets it shoot a vertical column with bullets. I assume that was painful. Oh, look, a bespeckled cephalopod. Next, the KBS longbow bombshell. As you can see, the headshot from the bombshell made his head go kablammy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to learning to cook. Someday I'll be able to flip those damn pancakes. See ya! At an abandoned summer camp. Deep in the woods. <laughs> Four stranded companions will become the life of the party. We got recast and the script has been flipped. Zombies, welcome to my party. This looks like a summer vacation right out of a nightmare. Talk about the boonies. Who the hell booked this gig? Let's play. Colors, man. This January, dance like somebody's watching. From the rave to the grave. Like a boss. You dead now, Holmes? In the redwoods. I guess I didn't know. Kiss your brains goodbye. Get the season pass now for DLC packs for one great price. Now, four DLC packs for one great price. Scorch Hardpoint, a scolding hot mining facility on the surface of an asteroid that sees its start at the mid bridge. The hill is highly contested, making it difficult to secure long periods of control. Early setup for the turbine hardpoint is key. This is where you can rack up huge objective points and build towards score streaks. The sky bridge can be used as a fast but risky route in rotation to the hangar. 
The third hill in the rotation is another solid chance for your team to punish the opposition, with players inside the hill focusing on close-range gunfights and objective control. The other team members must lock down the backside of the hangar to ensure favorable spawns and continued reinforcement. It's time to head to our fourth and final hardpoint. A popular route will be through rocks and straight towards the drill. With its open nature, this is a good place for use of aerial score streaks like the Trinity Rocket or Bombardment. With Gun Up, you'll want to focus on holding down drill control and keeping attackers at bay. If you're new to Scorch Hardpoint, focus on the second Turbine Hill. Improvement there will do wonders. Pre-Sick Dumpling, located in progressive Japan in the early stages of the STF invasion. The first Dumpling station is on a war-torn street. Open skies and multiple lanes of entry make this the perfect objective for the attacking team. There are two main options for lanes of attack through Cherry Blossom and up mid-street, or pushing from the statue and into the ticket's building. Either option, if done correctly, can provide positive results. Teams will find the drone at mid-map in the lobby. Control here is essential and hosts some of the most important one-on-one -on -one gunfights. The second uplink station is in an alley in the back apartment's area. The defense and hold of the construction building is imperative. Once lost, attackers will have free reign of your base. Precinct uplink can become a high-scoring affair, with many key choke points littered throughout the map that force head-to-head -head engagements. This map is made for players with high-level gun skill. If an attacking team can gain control of the drone spawn and enemy base, there is huge potential for big rallies and swings. Frost uplink, a multi-lane research facility atop the icy tundra of Jupiter's moon Europa. The first uplink station is found just outside the Robo Bay. Due to the narrow chokes and close by spawns for defenders, Frost is one of the lower scoring uplink maps. Attackers will want to push through Robo and attempt to get off one point throws or the elusive two point score. The drone will spawn at mid map and control must be won here before pushing the attack. Our second uplink station is on the construction side of the map. Similar to the first, favor is with the defenders. Follow these keys to victory. First, controlling the drone. More time of possession equals more opportunity. And second, whether pushing the attack or playing defense, the sub bay is a crucial component of any successful play. Control there is imperative. And finally, with how low scoring the map can be, one point throws are essential. A miss or an interception could be the difference between a win and a heartbreaking loss. Frost Uplink is a game of inches and patience. If brute force isn't your style, don't be afraid to take advantage of the mini wall runs around the perimeter of the map. Retaliation Hardpoint, a classic style map set in ravaged Geneva during the thick of the SDF invasion. The battle begins with teams fighting for control over the top bridge hardpoint. Long range sightlines favor weapons such as the MV4. The fight moves to the lower street where the action becomes much more personal as short to medium range weapons will be your friend. While the lower street hardpoint can be scrappy and filled with contest, the next two hardpoints are where your team can do the most damage. It begins with an early rotation towards Cathedral, followed by a long trek across the map to hold down the broken building. These two hardpoints provide the best cover and easiest way to rack up objective points. Finally, it's time to head to our last hardpoint, the only objective where the action takes place indoors. Close range, high rate of fire weapons will destroy the competition. Retaliation hardpoint is a map that can fit any play style. However, it can be incredibly punishing and require strategy and patience to ensure victory. Crusher Search and Destroy, a medium-sized SDF munitions factory on the outer edges of Mars. Let's begin with the long central lane, a haven for use of the sniper rifle or attempting a risky but quick flank. On the outskirts of the map, you'll find the B-bomb site. For the attacking side, this is the more popular of the two objective locations. Post-bomb plant, the defensive players at the B-site have a long rotation to attempt to defuse. Attempting to retake control of the site proves incredibly difficult as attackers have key positions of cover that force their opponents into open areas or small choke points. On top of this powerful positioning, the offense can always rely on an inside wall run for a quick disengage. Changing focus to the A-bomb site, combat quickly shifts indoors. A U-shaped room connects the mid lane to the A objective, providing multiple lanes of entry. Crusher Search and Destroy provides drastically different engagements across the two objectives. Know your team's strengths and choose your bomb site wisely. Throwback Search and Destroy. 
fight in a variety of spaces and engagements in 1950s-style Main Street USA locale located on a giant tour-shaped space station. The B-bomb site provides a window for an aggressive sniper play. However, due to the open nature of the courtyard, it presents a high-risk, high-reward option for an attacking team, combined with the fact that the defensive side has many more areas of cover. Next, on to the A-bomb site. It will be found on the bike path below the rails bridge. The offensive side of the objective houses a bus that is a strong post-plant position for defending the bomb. Middle map is filled with train cars and two windows that have strong vantage points for assault rifle players. From these positions, you can quickly rotate to either bomb site or use numerous lanes for flanking routes. Throwback Search and Destroy showcases some of the more diverse attacking strategies from the offensive side. This is due to the fact that both bomb sites present strong opportunities for successful attacks and bomb plants.
infected. Survive at all costs. Infected. Your mission, survive at all costs. Infected.
Mission accomplished. A good day's work. Location locked in. Infected. Survive at all costs.
Mission success. Report to command for debrief. Infected. Survive at all costs.
control. Mission accomplished. Well done.